Hey everyone, welcome to this month's video where we'll be making a single layer portrait of Marilyn Monroe, just like this one. So, all you'll need for this video is some black paper and some white paper as well, or alternatively for this video I'll also be using a white canvas as my background. So to make something like this, you don't actually have to use a Marilyn Monroe image, you can actually use this method with other pictures as well. So. For example, I used it with my son's picture and it turned out really good. Um, also in terms of scale, you can make them really small like this one here, or in this video I'll be making a big one. This cut here was just a quick test. To get started, what we'll do is we just open up our GIMP software. So as long as you have a computer, the GIMP software is free, so that should be available to everyone. And then once you open up the GIMP software, it's almost the same as Photoshop. Um, it is slightly different, but it has most of the same features. Let's import our image. We'll just go open. And then we'll open this image here. That's the one we'll be using for this video. And this will also be available in the description if you want to follow along and do your own version. So once we open up our image, we can see that we've got a fairly large image, but all we really want to do for this video is make a portrait. So the first thing we want to do is to actually set up your canvas size. So that's the size that you'll actually be cutting out and making the size that you want to create at the end. So we'll set that up first by going File, New, and then we'll just set up the image size here. So mine's already set up. You can choose the different units here according to millimeters, centimeters or uh, inches because I'm in Australia I'll just be using centimeters because that's easier for me so I'll have a width of 40 and a height of 60 uh, yes okay that will be a big image I know um, so once we've got this created we can actually bring in our image so if I go to the location of my image I've got it here I can just drag and drop that in and you can see that my image is a bit smaller than the actual canvas size and I don't actually want to make this entire image I actually just want to crop it around to actually make a bit of a portrait so once I have this in what I can do is use this tool here the shift transform or shift T the transform click on my image and you'll see all these little handles appear so what you want to do is select one and then just enlarge your image So it's the size you want and then to the size you want. So I probably want it a little bit larger because I want to remove a little bit of the space on the right. And I probably want to move it down because I want to get rid of that signature. So what I'll do is I'll use this move tool and then I'll just move it down a little bit. There's a bit of black up there and that's fine. We'll need that later to actually create our stencil. So I've moved it down and then I'll use the transform tool once more time. And if you want to zoom out a little bit, you just hit the control key and just scroll out a little bit and the scroll button on your mouse. And then we can click on the image, scale it, whoop, not that way. Control Z to undo if you make a mistake. I just want to make it a little bit larger and then move it across to line it up along the left hand side and then hit the enter key one more time I reckon that's exactly what we need so looking at this image now what we can do is apply our filter or our actual stencil style so what we can do is go down to our filter, distort and select the newsprint so this is a great tool for creating stencils and there's quite a few different features here um, the first thing I'll go through is actually the size because you can see it's really fine and looks like we haven't even done anything. So just by adjusting this period here, what this adjusts is the sizing of our um, lines. So the larger you go with this feature, the larger our lines will get. So for this one, I think I'll go with about, I think we'll go with about 50. No, that still looks a bit fine actually. I think I'll go with, with about 90 and then 
you just double click the angle here, we'll just type in 90 and that will give us, make our lines go up and down in a vertical fashion. Now, the other thing we have here is the pattern tool and if you look under here, you can actually see a bunch of different options which create all sorts of different stencil styles which we'll probably go through in later videos because there's quite a lot of cool stuff here. So you can see there we've got the circle, we got the diamond, we've got squares as well, and we've also got crossing lines, all of which create pretty cool and unique uh, styles of stencils. For, for today's one, we'll just go with the halftone vertical lines. And the other features that we have here are the angle and the quality. So the anti-aliasing, if I just zoom in, I'll be able to show you a bit better. Um, if you could bring that down to zero, what you might notice is that the stencil gets a bit rougher, but if I just bring it up ever so slightly, you notice some of the details will just clean up a little bit. It mainly makes a difference between zero and 20. So if you just hold it at about 20, from 20 to 100, it doesn't really do anything. So I just leave it at about 20. And then we also have some other cool effects you can play with here, which is turbulence. And what that does is also adjust the width of the line. So if you want finer, I mean, it does something similar to period, I guess, in terms of adjusting the size. And then you also have block size here. So block size, what it does is it sort of adjusts where the stencil starts and finishes. So as I adjust this, you might notice that we get half a line somewhere. So if you look through just where her over here, it's created half a line. So I guess that's the start of the block size and over here will be the end of the block size where it's created another half line. So, I mean, if you are looking for, you know, creating a more interesting style with some half lines here and there, then I guess you could do that. And then angle boost, what that does with some images is with these vertical lines I found sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And what it does is it actually creates contours or it plays with the lines and makes them wave around the face sometimes. It works. For some reason this on this image it's not working, but it's a pretty cool feature if you can get it to work. Well, one thing I'm going to point out at, at this point on this image is that if we try to cut out this stencil, looking at our vertical white lines, especially in the background and around some of the features, they get way too close together and it'll be very difficult to cut those out. So what we're going to do is I'll show you a way we can actually control that. So if we just go out of this tool and cancel those, uh, cancel that tool. If you just go into the colors and then go down to our levels, what we will do is adjust the darkness and brightness of our image to control the size of those lines. So just by going in here and making our darkest darks a little bit brighter and bringing them up by about 40 I'd say on the darker levels and also reducing our brights by about I'd also say about 40, so that was 255, bring it down to 215 I think would be okay. So let's apply that and then reapply our filter. See if that fixes our issue there. Ah, I didn't do it again. Oh, there we go. It actually remembered our settings this time around, 941. And black on white. We can see that the white has grown ever so slightly. And that should be just enough looking at these high detail areas of the lips and the eyes and under the chin there where the darkest darks are. I think that will be just enough to cut the stencil quite well. So once we are happy with that, we just go OK. And one other really important thing we should do before we go to cut out our stencil is if we go to our filters, blur, mean Gaussian blur, I'll show you a cool trick here. Um, and apply, click this little box here with split view. What that does is it creates a line through the middle and the one half will have the filter applied and the other half not. So if we zoom in, what you might notice is that half the image has smoother lines and the other half has rougher edges. And that'll make a huge difference when you go to actually cut the image. So if you try to cut out the side with a rougher image and 
what the Cricut will do is try to cut out all these jaggedy edges and it will take much much longer to cut. But if you just try to smoothen them out even just a little bit by playing with the number of iterations we have here, all we really want to do is make them ever so slightly smoother and I think I'll go with about 40 here. I think that's more than enough and then we just click OK and that will apply the filter to the rest of our image. And that should just make it much, just a little bit quicker to cut out and save us a bit of time and make life a bit easier. So once we've done that we just hit the control and scroll to zoom out and I'm pretty happy with that actually. I think that's going to cut out really well. The only thing that we need to do is add a bit of black to the bottom of the image just so we can pull the stencil off the mat really easily. So what we will do is we just take our rectangle selection tool, select the bottom we want to remove and hit the delete key and that will remove that portion and because we have a black background um, that will automatically become black. Now what we can do is right click and merge our image down to create one image and then we can file export as a JPEG and we will just go and call this image MM. And export. Perfect. Now once we've finished with this stage we can go into our Cricut software, select new project and then so once you're in here you can just click the upload image button but you can also see some other image I've applied this halftone stencil to and it works quite well with other images or home images as well but especially portraits so we we'll just click upload browse select our stencil from our desktop just enlarge this and go to complex because we want to catch up all of that good detail in there and just remove the areas we want to cut out so we just select all of our lines and then select continue and that's looking pretty good even though we haven't even cut it yet so we select save And then once it's on our recently uploaded images, we can insert that into our cutting space, into our canvas space. So as you can see, I've got, already got my space set up to metric, but obviously you use this to get this to the right size once again. But because we've already set up our sizing in GIMP, our height and width should already be set up correctly. So we just go down here in the bottom and zoom out to make it easier for us to resize. So we got 141, that's way too big. We can come back down to about 64. So I'm going to cut it a little bit larger so I have some overhang just to make it a little bit easier for myself. And once I apply this to my canvas, I also don't want these little black at the bottom and the top so I want to remove that so I'm just going to make this an extra two centimeters on the bottom and an extra two at the top. Now one thing I'm realizing just looking at my cutting mat is it is too wide and will not cut on this mat because the cutting mats are only 30 centimeters wide so what I have to do now is chop this image in half in here I think I will do it just to make it easier and then cut half an image and cut the other half and then splice them together so to do that what I will do is create a shape using a square And then, so we have 42.78, 
and then we have our squares over here which I will use to cut my image in half. So what I'm thinking is I'll just go through halfway along one of those black lines and then what I will do is slice. I think is the feature I want. Yes, and it's sliced all my images into different pictures. So as you can see here I've got two halves and as long as I don't scale or change any of them then I should be able to cut them out. So, so we will just remove this half, cut this side, and then redo the other side and cut the other side, which is a bit of a pain, but it's just a little bit of a workaround we have to do. So we'll just make this side. Okay, so now it's time for my favorite part where we actually peel off our project. So unfortunately I had a little bit of a mishap there with a the blade, but that's okay. Let's peel this off and see how our stencil came out. Just going nice and slow. Here we can see our stencil has come out really nice, it's cut out really well on our Cricut machine. At this point, if you're happy with a white background and you're looking for a really simple minimalistic look, then you could actually just stick this down and call it done. Or if you wanted to, you could also put down some black paint and then use this as a stencil and spray some white paint through it. Unfortunately, I don't actually have any white paint today, so I'm going to be going with uh, sticking down the paper route. Um, the only thing is, because this channel is called Wicked Paint, I think it would be missing something if I didn't go for a nice painted artistic background. So um, I have every other color except white. So let's go with that and paint a cool background in and stick these cool stencils down. background is dried, let's put my stencil back on and see how it looks before we stick it down for good. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how that's come out, so what I'm going to do is use some spray adhesive some multi-purpose spray adhesive but you can use anything to stick this down whether it's a glue stick or anything that will stick paper to a canvas really I'm just using the spray adhesive because it's easy to apply and
don't worry if it doesn't line up with your edge perfectly. I think I'm going to go around with a bit of black paint. And the other thing I'm going to do is also cut these lines all the way through to the edge. So, so the final will look a bit nicer. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Now we'll just go and apply the other side as well. done. I think as I said earlier I'm just going to cut all these ends through. Probably won't do that on video and maybe play around with spacing them a little bit because the good thing about sp using spray adhesive is you can always sort of pull it off quite easily because it's still a bit tacky and apply a bit of glue to make it a bit more permanent later on as well. But for now I think this is done so I'll just put a bit of black paint around the edge to finish it off touch up a few areas, cut these bits through, and I think that's pretty much done. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe so you can enjoy some more.